God be he go to Pator and greetings in Jesus' name. I think we're all sorted out and ready to go. I'm going to speak uh, around three areas this morning briefly before we move into the main portion of our Sabbath school time together. Uh, firstly, I'd like to speak about where the conference is going. Uh, secondly, I'd like to speak uh, about Sabbath school itself. And then thirdly, I'd like to refer for a few moments uh, before Pastor Doug McLeod, our regional pastor, comes up about the study that we've been studying this past week about false teachers from 2 Peter chapter 2 and also the book of Jude. So firstly about the conference and where it's going. Over the past several years, we've been looking at all of our churches across the conference, 125 uh, congregations that we have, being healthy and as a church that believes in health and health is so important to us uh, in, in our bodies we've been talking about the body of Christ also being healthy and then just just last year at our conference session in the month of September we said to the church it's been great focusing on the church body being healthy but we need to shift our, our focus. And so we did that, and our current focus now is from a focus on the church to a focus on the communities around us. And the prayer being an audacious prayer that every single community in Aotearoa, particularly in North Island, which is our responsibility, would be a healthy Adventist community. And so really, who are we and how can we do that? Only by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit can we pray that every community that our churches are placed in, every community where you and I do life, where we live or where we uh, work or study, that that would be a place that would eventually become a healthy Adventist community. A community that is aware of and has taken hold of the three angels' messages and the last message for the world that we're living in in preparation for Jesus' soon return. So that is the dream, that is the vision that we are currently working together on as a church and I would like to ask you this morning that together we would pray for that and also to acknowledge and congratulate you as Northland Region because we see that already happening and taking place here. And so I do want to acknowledge our pastors and your families. I'd like to acknowledge each of our churches and also school in Whanganei because it's a, it's a great work that's taking place there. We've just got a new principal move in this year and I'd ask that you remember uh, Anna, they will be here uh, later on today, Anna and uh, Wiley. And just pray your blessing over them as they move into leadership and change in the direction uh, for our school. So that's a snapshot of where we're going as a conference. For more information, just go onto the conference website uh, and you'll, you'll see more information there. In fact, by the end of this month, uh, the 3rd of July, in fact, we go to a brand new website. And that website, why this new website is different, is that it will be a combined website for North New Zealand Conference and South New Zealand Conference. Instead of having two websites for the two conferences, we'll just have one website because we're one country. And it just makes sense to have one website for, for the Church of New Zealand. A few thoughts here regarding Sabbath school itself. We all attend Sabbath school right across the conference every single Sabbath. Most churches at 9.30, other churches at 10, and other churches also uh, do Sabbath school differently. But just an appeal. How can we make every single Sabbath school a healthier Sabbath school? What could we do? And I'm not here to give answers because I believe the Holy Spirit speaks to all of us. And you have an answer for your Sabbath school. But just my observation as I move across the, the church, I believe Sabbath school could be healthier. And so I'd just like to appeal to you and to challenge you today just to relook. Um, you as leaders, you as Sabbath school teachers, and then us as participants in Sabbath school, 
What could we do to make the discipleship part, the teaching part, the learning part of Sabbath School uh, each week a healthier place to be and uh, healthier in the learning that we we take uh, participate in? And that, that I would like to segue into our study that, today because I believe it's very easy for false teaching to seep into our Sabbath School classes if we are not true to the Word of God and in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's turn to Second Peter today and also to the book of Jude and just look at uh, what is presented before us there just so that we could rethink, just rethink again. How we, how we approach scripture, how we approach authority in the church, our relationship with the fellowship of, believer, of believers, but then also just how we go about living the Christian life. I've categorized all that's listed in the second book of Peter chapter 2, and also in the book of uh, Jude, starting at verse 3, under four categories, and I've placed them up on the screen. I've, I, I like the way Jude, in Jude, chapter, uh, Jude uh, verse 12 and 13, uh, portrays with uh, these pictures, these biblical pictures, of what has taken place uh, in the church. I think what is uh, critical here for us to note, it's not speaking about outside of the church, it's actually speaking about inside of the church. Could somebody read for us, please, Jude, verse 12 and verse 13? Nice and loud and, and with uh, warmth and authority. Anybody able to do that for us this morning? Jude, verse 12 and 13. I'm going to stop my brother here because we've already heard you. I'd like to hear uh, a new voice. Actually, I'd love to hear a woman's voice in our worship this morning. Is there a woman who could read for us uh, loud and clear? Jude, verse 12 and 3. picture set of pictures there and what it says to us is this four things it's a challenge to leadership in the church as leaders how are we leading the people of God but then also as followers how are we working together with with leaders it's also a challenge to to think about uh, the possibility of false teaching coming into the church, but then to carefully consider the possibility of deception coming into our very own thinking. So let's look at these four categories that we've put up onto the screen here today. And just to look firstly at this area of the misrepresentation of scripture, false teaching coming into the church. False teaching coming into the church. Stated very clearly that this took place in the Old Testament, but the leaders in the new in the early church are saying this also will come into the early church, but also warning us that this is very possible for us today. The most common version of misrepresentation of the gospel that we see today is when people are given the freedom of the gospel, and our study talks about this, given the freedom of the gospel, but then people are deceived so they go back to the life that they were previously living. But we need to take that deeper and refer then to the teachings of Paul and notice that when Paul talks about people are freed by the gospel, we come along as a church, as leaders, and then we add or place upon them a new another set of rules when really they have been freed by the gospel. Misrepre misrepresentation of scripture. Each 
Sabbath school with, with the truth of God, but we're not, not then placing upon them another whole set of rules. Because when you take them back to the life they were once living, and they were living lives of, of deception, Yes, they were living under sexual immorality. They were living under uh, corruption. They were living under all of these things. But what takes place in the church is we stay in the church, but we still manifest these types of behaviors. So there is corruption in the church. There is a moral behavior in the church. So let's go to the next one. And it talks about the disregard for authority. A very good example is taking place right now in the church where there is a, a discussion that everybody is aware of and it's the elephant in the room and it's a discussion around it is written. And for any Adventist that is not aware of this, uh, possibly you've got your eyes focused on the right things and you're not spending most of your time on Facebook. But here's a good example where disregard for authority scriptural authority, holy and appointed authority, places us in bedlam in the church and anarchy takes place. But it's the chance to say, if these people have been placed in authority, we need to trust God's leading. If uh, this pastor is the pastor of our church, we need to trust God's leading that she or he is the pastor. If this person has been placed the leader of Sabbath school by our church, we need to trust that this person has been placed there by God and respect that person who is in that role. A difficult challenge, but this is where the reality of the past life seeps back into life in the church. Immoral behavior is the other area that's placed, is discussed here. Immoral behavior is behavior that we lived in the past, and it talks about these big, uh, well, if you go and take this deeper, it's talking about people who go back to this life of carousing. And I'm thinking, what does carousing in daylight mean? It, it's, a, it, it's what we would call today uh, binging. We go on these pub crawls. We go into this whole life of debauchery where, where, where everything is uh, free of rules, where freedom really is submitting to the Lordship of Christ. And so immoral behavior takes place in the church. Not only that, there's this disregard for fellowship. As soon as we walk through these areas and we get to this place where we disregard the fellowship of the saints, the community of faith, of living together, being together as the body of Christ, we place ourselves in a place where the church is no longer the church. No longer that body that God has called out of Babylon, but then also replaced into Babylon to be the, the, the light and the salt, be the body of Christ that will influence communities around us to be healthy Adventist communities. This is a whirlwind uh, survey of what Peter is placing before us. But if you were to take this in a nutshell, what this whole study is all about is to keep our eyes focused on Christ. And the moment we do that, the time that we shift our eyes from our focus on Christ, our focus then becomes on self and we lose what God has called us to. We need faithfulness to Scripture respect for authority, spirit-led behavior, and commitment to fellowship. These are difficult challenges. This call that's been placed on us, but the appeal of our lesson today is that we would faithfully be about what God has called us to be for Him and for His glory. May God bless you as we continue to study the second book of Peter, the first book of Peter, and also Jude, and know that God will bless us as a church as we pray for healthy Adventist communities. Handing it over now to Pastor Doug McLeod, our regional pastor, who is the regional pastor for the Northland region, but also the northwest region of Auckland. And because um, he is so busy, um, that's why he's looking so slim. So please uh, give your attention now to Pastor Doug McLeod. <laughs> 